Hello, beautiful people. So I promised you that I would bring you some news about CDCR. That's the uh, California Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections in California. They are hiring like crazy because there are a ton of job openings and they pay very well. Uh, a group of my students is currently working there and uh, they say that there's mandatory overtime and they're doing very well, but there's some major changes coming to CDCR. So I would like you to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you because it may decide whether or not you decide to enter the corrections field instead of going to patrol, law enforcement, etc. So uh, I have had a chance now to do some research on this. I was able to uh, interview several of my students who are working for CDCR and uh, some of them gave me some valuable information that I'm going to be passing on to you in this video. The first thing you need to know is that you can make a whole lot of money on CDCR working for state corrections. Uh, I am told that if you look at uh, all the cars and the parking lots, you will see uh, all the most expensive sports cars, top of the line cars, Teslas, etc. The entire parking lot is flooded with those things because you start out as a corrections a correctional officer working for the state of California, but then you're work, you're making a lot of overtime, and uh, you know you have all this extra money. Oh my gosh, let me buy the most expensive car out there. It's not always the best uh, thing to do, and I'll tell you at the end of the movie, I'll give you some life advice uh, on that that I obtained from some of these students, some of whom have been working there for some time at CDCR. So let's talk about the major changes that you need to know. All of a sudden this light comes on on the screen and it's almost like uh, you know the guy upstairs is uh, talking to us because some major changes are coming and you need to know what they are. So the main thing is that uh, the whole world has been watching how many uh, people we have incarcerated in the United States, uh, anywhere from uh, 2.4 to 2.53 million people uh, are incarcerated uh, in the United States. Now when you compare that to the rest of the world, Russia has less people in jail, China has less people in jail, and all of these statistics that I'm telling you, you can go and check yourself to find out what's going on. And this information is going to lead me into the reason why CDCR is, is going to do a full-blown remodel on their uh, rehabilitation model. So anyway, we in the United States lead the world in incarceration. So if we have 2.4 million people incarcerated, we have another uh, 2 plus million uh, on probation or parole at any time. So uh, people have been looking for solutions for a long time. And so one of the solutions that's coming to California Corrections is that they are looking at other countries outside of the United States and uh, it's funny that I have to say that but it's real and they're looking at what can we learn from them as to why they don't have so many people incarcerated one of them is that they have shorter sentences than we do here in the United States so when somebody commits a crime it's usually a lot less time in custody in these foreign countries compared to the United States. For California specifically, they are looking to transform their jails into like a college or university campus. And all the stuff that I'm telling you is real and I again encourage you to go double check everything that I'm telling you so that you know what's coming. And so they're looking at these different countries, these different uh, incarceration and rehabilitation models and they now have brought that to California and uh, what is happening is now they're looking at uh, changing the way correctional officers conduct business here in California where uh, they're going to minimize almost abolish handcuffing prisoners they're going to limit the number of times that we can actually put handcuffs on uh, prisoners uh, inside these prisons, uh, these California state prisons. And why? And why is because the, uh, sorry about the sun, uh, is because the, uh, this new model, this new rehabil rehabilitation model, 
is supposed to minimize violent encounters with correctional uh, officers and uh, prisoners and it's supposed to also minimize the rate of recidivism and so that's the major things that are coming and so why is it important for you to know this because you go through the whole hiring process you go through the academy etc and then all of a sudden you get to the jail and they're going to be telling you to minimize or completely stop handcuffing prisoners so just use verbal judo to communicate with these people i find it interesting not that it couldn't work with some individuals but i think with other individuals and the type of country that we live in a lot of these prisoners are going to take advantage of this uh, no handcuffs rule and unfortunately i think there will be some assaults on correctional officers and that concerns me i hope that when they move to this new model that they uh, definitely uh, develop a certain criteria of no handcuffs with non-violent prisoners like similar to like trustees at the jail where basically they have uh, they have proven themselves not to be out of control because if that doesn't happen obviously they're going to be assaulting correctional officers and that's never good so anyway that's the first part and that's a major part of what you have to consider when you think about going to work for California Corrections. The other part that these uh, people that I interviewed wanted to me to share with you is uh, relationships and divorce and uh, separation of benefits and court orders and restraining orders. Um, you, uh, some correctional officers get hired, they're making really good money. Uh, it's obvious they have money in the bank they live in a nice place then they meet someone and that person is not oblivious to the fact that this person the correctional officer is making really good money and so they date them they marry them without a prenuptial unfortunately and then a couple of years into the the relationship the other person decides to divorce the correctional officer and so that's where the problems come in right you have incidents and again all this stuff is verifiable don't just take my word for it go check yourself but you have incidents of people getting married uh, when they're correctional officers and then all of a sudden uh, the person that they're with decide to divorce them and they're going to take uh, half of their retirement or at least the number of years they've been married to them right so if the correctional officer was supposed to be uh, retiring at 57 years old uh, under the new retirement system if they've been married say 10 years and the person decides to div divorce them uh, the person is going to take you know 10 years of, of that part of half of that retirement and so all of a sudden the correctional officer is going to have to work longer because they're not going to be able to uh, make the same amount of money they would have made if they would have stayed married uh, and they you know uh, got their full retirement so that's something to consider and that's what's happening right now that uh, there are uh, you know a, a significant group of officers that get married marry the wrong person and then all of a sudden they're going through this terrible uh, domestic violence separation where uh, the other person takes a restraining order on the correctional officer the correctional officer now cannot carry a gun and they're put into a special assignment uh, until they're deemed uh, that they can carry a gun and so it's unfortunate that these things are happening also purchasing I mentioned earlier that I was giving you some life advice this whole thing about the uh, the parking lot being full of expensive cars is concerning uh, some of these cars the payment is as high as a home mortgage and so you know cars are not <laughs> great assets to have because they depreciate so when you buy a brand new car you drive it off the lot and all of a sudden you've lost ten to fifteen thousand dollars if you make a u-turn you try to return the car to the dealership uh, they'll buy it back for you know fifteen to twenty thousand less than you paid to them so that's something to consider and so why am I a college professor going through these situations with you because I want you to be aware of the concerns 
of what is happening in corrections and maybe what's happening in law enforcement. I'm not sure. When you work in uh, law enforcement field, you're going to be working different uh, shifts, graveyard shifts, swing shifts, midday, whatever. And some people in relationships don't always like that. They prefer that you work the Monday through Friday day shift and be home in the evenings and at night you're a loving husband or loving wife. But unfortunately, when you work in corrections, uh, you are, especially when you first start out, you're all over the place. Uh, you're working you know, three months in this assignment, three months in that assignment. And so that's something to consider. The stuff in the video is something for you to consider. I recommend if you're gonna get married uh, you know, nowadays, right, 2024, that you sign a prenup, uh, you have the other person sign a prenup, and that way, if you end up uh, getting into a divorce situation, you're not losing half of your retirement, and it would encourage the other person that you marry to try to work things out instead of just getting divorced for irreconcilable differences. So anyway, that's important. Uh, mental health is important for this type of job. You're dealing with a high-stress job in law enforcement, and so you have to have a balanced life. And so being balanced means uh, that you should be careful what you're spending. So if you're starting out making between $110,000 to $115,000 a year, that's a whole lot of money. And so you should be living within your means. You should be saving. You should be managing your bills. There's nothing wrong with purchasing a commuter, even if it's a brand new commuter, a Toyota Corolla or something, to commute to work so that it's an affordable payment. It's not an extravagant car by any means, but you know, Toyota Camry, whatever, I'm not endorsing uh, specifically that, but just a reliable car with air condition, reliable, you know, good on gas that you can commute to work. So this one student that I was, uh, you know, talking about these things was saying that uh, she has seen a lot of uh, correctional officers start out with very positive attitudes and then they get married and then they overspend and then they get in too much debt and then they get served with papers and then they fall apart. And so uh, I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't just talk about the major changes coming in to the CDCR uh, and, you know, as well as the effects on your personal life working in this type of environment. Now, having said all that, right, let's go back to the beginning when I was discussing the major changes coming to CDCR in terms of converting these jails into what will appear to be college and university campuses. The goal is rehabilitation and so they want uh, these prisoners to get rehabilitated so that when they get released from these jails, which eventually most of them will, that they can go back to the real world and be able to have a skills to put to work so that they don't you know, commit recidivism again back into jail, right? So for example, the Juvenile Offender Program, right, J-O-P, is now uh, putting um, a program in the juvenile jails to teach them how to build mini homes, right? Like uh, auxiliary dwelling units, ADUs, which you know, in California, it's a big deal because we are short on the amount of property and housing that we have to put homes in. And so the laws recently changed to allow uh, property owners to build a small home in their backyards and rent it out. And so the state is now learning that, hey, we need to teach these juvenile offenders skills that they can put to work when they come out of jail, when they come out of juvenile hall or whatever the program is. And so that's important. So I don't want you to watch this video and get to the point where you're like, well, gosh, Brian, you're discouraging me from working corrections. And that is not what this video is intended for. It's more of an informational video about some major changes that are coming to CDCR. Um, do I think that those of you that are working in CDCR should be uh, open to the idea? Yes. Uh, I, at the same time, uh, look, I'm into officer safety. I worked in law enforcement. I want to stay alive. You better be watching people's hands. You better be staying alert. 
if somebody is a violent offender, I believe they should be handcuffed. And even them, if they were listening to this video, they would say, you know, I think that Brian's right. I should be handcuffed because if I, I'm not wearing handcuffs around somebody I don't like, I might be inclined to choke them out or whatever, right? So anyway, uh, if you're in the field or if you're thinking about entering the field, you have to understand what you're walking into. You're walking into a system that uh, has seen a high level of recidivism. Uh, offenders that get released and then reoffend and come back into the system. And so now they're looking at ways to minimize uh, the level of incarcerated individuals at the same time rehabilitating them so that when they get released, they go back out in the field. Um, I am not an attorney. Uh, and I have to say that because earlier I was telling you to get a prenup. Uh, but I do think that you need to take care of yourself. You need to not only officer safety at work, but you need to use some common sense. Uh, there's a, a saying, love is blind. And love is blind because when you're in love, you tend to ignore a lot of things that when you're not in love, you can see very clearly. And so you meet someone you love, they love you, you guys want to get married, nothing wrong with that. But consider what I told you about the prenup. Consider what I told you about uh, protecting your mental health. Now, earlier I also said that they're working a lot of overtime. I believe they're, they're limiting the amount of overtime a month to 80 hours. But, man, that's a lot of money and that's a lot of hours. When you're on probation, me being a former training officer, I recommend that when you're on probation, you never volunteer to work extra hours. I think it's best, the less hours you're working, the less chances you're gonna get in trouble, uh, screwing up, violating the department policy, whatever. And if you're too tired when you come to work, the higher the chances that you're gonna violate department policy. So I know it seems like a whole lot of money, and it is, right? Think about this for a second. So you work uh, normally, you'll be working for the state of California 20 days a month, it's on the five days on, two days off plan. So you're working 40 hours a week. Imagine when they limit you to only 10 eight-hour shifts, which is 80 hours, right? Uh, that's, you're working two extra uh, weeks. That's, you know, right? That's uh, 10 extra days, right, of 10-hour days on top of your two weeks. And so even though the money's good and I've been there, right, uh, you should be saving some of that money if you decide to do it after probation then you can start working overtime like crazy now I know there's gonna be mandatory overtime you're getting ready to leave the supervisor says hey we're really short staffed we want you to stay there's really not much you could do but uh, don't forget about getting some sleep when you get home don't go out drinking with your buddies uh, you got to take care of yourself your mental health is the most important asset you will have in corrections, in law enforcement, in judicial, anywhere, you got to take care of yourself. So I hope that you got a lot out of this video. I encourage you to go research the things that I mentioned just to confirm that what I'm telling you is going to happen. It's called the California model, I believe. And uh, go online and ask, you know, search for CDCR. I'd like you to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Give me a like so that it brings up the algorithm. And do share this video with others who are thinking about going into corrections, going into CDCR or other type of uh, you know, similar juvenile you know, uh, correctional facility. It's important that you know what's coming. Before I close the video, I can't stress enough no matter what new program that's going on, you got to stay alert. You got to stay alert. You got to be really careful. There's people that are in custody that have mental problems. They have drug problems. They have, you know, social issues. You name it. And if I can give you some strong advice is to really learn verbal judo, how to de-escalate a situation how to pause before stupid stuff comes out of your mouth that will escalate the situation. Uh, these people are going through the worst time of their lives. They've been convicted, they've been sentenced, 
the freedom has been taken away. And so now your job is just to sit there and you know, make sure they're safe, make sure they have medical benefits and they're being fed properly, etc. But you can never drop your guard. You have to always, always, always officer safety. Always take care of yourself, your mental health at home. This is why we were telling you earlier, be careful about relationships, be careful about overspending. And so anyway, uh, the fatherly uh, side of me is coming out. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any other ideas or questions, uh, please go in the comments below and uh, ideas for videos. I will continue. Uh, 2024, I'm going to be publishing as often as possible new laws, new procedures as I'm teaching uh, several criminal justice courses. And my next video is going to be talking about a new law that just came into effect in 2024 that has to do with how officers must now inform the person uh, the reason why they stopped and then we'll go over the whole thing. Uh, I'll tell you what the section is, under what conditions, are there exceptions, etc. These are all important things. If you watch this video and uh, if you're watching this video and you're currently in law enforcement, I know things have calmed down a bit out there, but it's never good to get too uh, relaxed. It's okay to be a little bit paranoid so that you can kind of, you know, be alert when things happen, you're prepared. Always be prepared, okay? So thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.